React Native with Expo is a pretty great setup, and the nice thing is that you can also run it inside Firebase Studio. Let's see how to build an app for both Android and iOS. The first step is to create a new project. Just give the workspace a name and pick whether you want a development build or an Expo Go app. Starting with Expo Go is easier, and later you can always switch to a development build if you want to add native code. And there's the environment. On the right you see an Android emulator and a web version of a simple welcome app. It's a great way to explore and learn a little about creating apps with Expo. We won't need this default app, so we'll reset the project. There are a couple of ways to do this, but I'll use the Reset Project script. In the terminal menu, just click Run Task. The script asks whether to move existing files into a folder or just delete them. I'll choose Delete since we won't need those files. The script is ready. When I refresh the web app, I see a new main page that says edit index.tsx to edit this screen. You'll find that code in the app folder right here. Now to test the app on a real physical mobile device, you need to go to the expo.dev website and sign up. They have a free plan that gives you 30 mobile app builds per month, which should be plenty for any hobby developer. I've already signed up. Next, I'll grab my iPhone. The view on the right is a screen capture from my real phone, not an emulator. I'll search for the Expo Go, which is also available on the Google Play Store for Android development. After logging in with Expo.dev credentials, the app looks like this. So now our testing environment is ready. At this point, I see two task logs in Firebase Studio, Reset Project and OnStart Android. I'll click the on start log and then scroll up to find a QR code. Scanning that code with my phone downloads the app straight to the device. Just like that, the app runs on my iPhone. The best part is that when I write code, the changes show up on the phone in real time. I'll type hello world and right away the same text appears on my iPhone. It's a really smooth development and test workflow. At this point, it's wise to push our code base to version control. Trust me, you'll need it. I'll save some time by skipping the clicks, but you can check out my other videos for the details. Everything is ready to start building the actual app. My main idea for this app is to create something that helps us make decisions, like an oracle that tells us the wisest thing to do. On the main page, there will be a button that says yes or no. After tapping the button, the camera opens so the user can take a photo. The oracle thinks for three seconds and then responds with yes, no, or maybe. Just a heads up, it took me a couple of tries with AI to get this working. Sometimes it gets it right, sometimes it doesn't, but you can always start fresh and ask the AI to rebuild. I hope that in the near future, AI will be able to get these kinds of simple apps right on the first try. We've got a few errors to fix. If it were a dozen, I'd start over, but with only a couple, I'll try fixing them. If you ever see an import error, it's most likely that the component hasn't been installed. Let's ask Gemini to install Expo Camera. You can also do this with a terminal, but sometimes I do it this way. Now we have a new error. I'll copy the error and the line number and give it to the AI. We got rid of that one. Let's try another. and that one is gone too. This next error seems to be because the opening tag is camera view, but the closing tag is camera. It should be camera view as well. By the way, when you're fixing errors made by AI, it's helpful to peek at some example code snippets in the Expo Go documentation. You can find the right tags there, and maybe you'll be able to fix some of the bugs without AI next time. 
This line also probably needs camera view and not camera. Let's try refreshing the web app. Nice! It looks like it could work. Let's proceed with trying it out on my physical mobile device. It looks promising there as well. The app is telling me it needs permissions for the camera. And there's the correct main page of the app. I'll tap the yes or no link. The camera opens and I take a picture of my editing screen to ask if I should keep working. The oracle says, no. Oh well, sorry guys, I guess I have to stop for now. Just kidding, let's keep going because this is getting exciting. Now that we have a working app, we can look at how to create a build. This means compiling a standalone app that we can install without needing the Expo Go app. You can find the steps in the documentation, but let's see how it works in practice. First, we need to install the EAS command line interface. Let's try the EAS who am I command. It works. Next, we need to get logged in. We'll use a token for that and you can get it from expo.dev. Then, we need to set the token value to the expo token environment variable. You can define environment variables in the dev.nix file in Firebase Studio. After making changes to the file, click the Rebuild Environment button to make the changes take effect. Now the EAS Who Am I command says we are authenticated. Next we need to configure the build. It asks, would you like to automatically create an EAS project? Yes please. Then it asks which platforms to configure and we'll select all of them. This configuration created an EAS.json file, so let's take a look at what we have there. You'll see configurations for development, preview, and production builds. One thing to note here is that the development client parameter requires a development server. You'll get live updates when you make changes to your code base, but the app isn't standalone. That's why we're choosing the preview build, since it's a standalone app. First, it asks for an application ID. We'll just hit enter. Then it asks if you want to generate a new Android key store. Yes, please. And it ends in an error. This might be temporary, but I wanted to show it to you in case you run into it. The issue is that we don't have the key tool in our environment, and the build is trying to generate the key store in the cloud. To fix this, we'll install the key tool in Firebase Studio. Let's ask the AI how to do it. We need to install the JDK package. That means we need to make another change to the dev.nix file. Let's review the changes. There's the JDK package. Gemini added the package and we need to rebuild the environment again. Let's try executing the key tool now. It works, so we can try building the app again. The build is starting. Note that this happens in the EAS cloud, so you can go to the expo.dev site and watch your build task running there. The build took about 5 minutes and it's ready. Now we can go to the expo.dev site and download the APK file. You can transfer the APK to your Android device with a wire, or by transferring it to Google Drive and installing it from there. Let's try it on my Android tablet. First, the app asks for camera permissions. Then we can ask the Oracle if I should drink a can of mineral water. The answer is no. What a pity. I was kind of thirsty, but no is no. Let's see how the iOS build starts. This requires logging in, so I'll just show you up to that point. First, it asks for a bundle identifier. Then it asks for standard slash exempt encryption, and I'll select yes. Next, it asks if I want to log in. I'll select no thank you, but then it forces me to log in anyway in the next step. So, we'll stop here. I just wanted to show you how it starts, and you can follow the build steps yourself from here.
I also want to mention that there's an option to use the local flag in the build command. You can try it, but it didn't work for me in Firebase Studio. It takes up too much disk space from the build image and runs out of space. You can try it, but the idea is that you probably don't do local builds in Firebase Studio but only on your own local machine. For those of you who want to make a production build and submit it to an app store, let's quickly look at how you start that process. I won't go through it step by step, but I want to show you where to find all the information. In the Expo Dev documentation, you'll find steps for both Android and iOS. For an Android app, you need to sign up for a Google Play developer account, then create an app on the Google Play console and create a Google service account. Next, you'll execute the build commands just like we did, and then use the EAS submit command to submit the build to the Google Play Store. For an iOS app, you need to sign up for an Apple developer account, and then include the bundle identifier in the app.json file. After that, you can do the build like we saw earlier. The process will ask you to log in and provide all the necessary details. Then you run the EAS submit command to submit the build to the Apple App Store. That's it for this tutorial. If you liked it, share it with your coding friends. Happy coding!